The Moose development team at Idaho National Laboratory has been hard at work building new capabilities for its signature simulation platform. Today, team lead Derek Gaston will show us how they've coupled multiple modeling applications together to get accurate simulations on a range of size and time scales. Moose can now simultaneously simulate hundreds of properties in thousands of reactor components. And they've verified that the simulation can approach accurate predictions because it recreates known trends observed by both the nuclear industry and the scientific community. Next, they wanted to see if it could simulate the behavior of every individual fuel rod in a full commercial reactor core. Let's see what they've done. The first reactor design that we're looking at is the AP-1000 from Westinghouse. The AP-1000 contains 40,000 fuel rods, and we wanted to use this new capability to couple together Moose-based applications to actually simulate the full core over two fuel cycles within the reactor. So we're going to be using Rattlesnake for the neutronics calculation, Bison to simulate each of the 40,000 fuel rods simultaneously, and Relap7 to simulate the coolant system. Within an operating reactor, as the fuel is consumed, the efficiency of the reactor continually drops. Therefore, the reactor must be powered down at increments, generally around a year to a year and a half, to actually refuel the reactor and move the existing fuel around within the reactor in order to maximize efficiency. In this movie, we're going to be simulating that process. The right side of the movie is going to be showing the coolant system as simulated by Relap7. There are four loops in this reactor that carry water through the core, and then that hot water flows out through the four loops and goes through four different heat exchanger elements. As the water cools, it then flows down towards the bottom of the reactor and re-enters the reactor core to be reheated again, and so the cycle continues. On the left-hand side, we're going to be able to watch the burn-up of the fuel. This is actually showing how much of the fuel has been consumed. Within this simulation, we are starting the reactor up over about a two-day period, and then it's sitting at a constant operating power for a year. At the year mark, the reactor is actually powered down, and then the fuel is going to be shuffled inside of the reactor. Fuel elements on the exterior that are less burned up are going to be moved towards the interior, then a new fuel element is inserted in the middle of the reactor. Within this simulation, we simplified the fuel movement that's typically done inside of a nuclear reactor in order to demonstrate the coupling capability of allowing the fuel to move and the ability to insert new fuel into the reactor within a running simulation. The reactor is then powered up again over a period of about two days and another nearly year-long fuel cycle is undertaken as the somewhat fresh fuel on the inside of the reactor again begins to burn up and equalize out with the burn up that's now on the outside of the reactor. Now we want to actually look at the behavior of the fuel as it went through those two fuel cycles. In this movie, we can see the behavior of each of the 40,000 individual fuel rods. And what we're looking at is the movement of the fuel stacks within each one of those rods. There are three main phases that the fuel will go through. There's the thermal expansion as the reactor heats up and the fuel very quickly grows. And then a densification phase as the fuel is under very high pressure and at a high temperature, the fuel will actually shrink back down. And then later on in life, as fission products start to build up within the fuel, it will cause the fuel to swell once again and start to grow. And you can see those three phases play out here in this movie. Notice that at the year time frame, you can actually watch the reactor very quickly, power down, and then the fuel itself is actually moved within the reactor. This is the first time we're able to actually watch individual fuel elements move with their history within the reactor as we move fuel from the inside of the reactor to the outside of the reactor. It's also interesting to watch the middle assembly here that was replaced with new fuel as it starts to undergo those same three phases of the life cycle independently of what's happening to all the other rods. And so we can actually start to get an understanding here of the behavior of the individual fuel rods throughout multiple cycles in a reactor. This simulation represents a unique capability to actually track what's happening to each of the individual 40,000 fuel rods within the reactor through several reactor cycles.